so I want to spend most of this conversation going through the key takeaways from the recent Q2 letter that you sent out to your your clients there at Hoisington. Um, very quickly, though, just also to, an educational document. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Um, so uh, before I do, though, I just want to get your high level response to this question, which is um, it, you, your, your letter basically warns of a coming credit crunch. And I'm, I'm going to let you really walk through the argument for that. Um, we had a, an economist on this channel not that long ago, um, Ed Yardini, and, and he sort of talked about this concept of a, of a rolling recession, where in, instead of the entire economy sort of slowing down at once and, and, and growth contracting, that it was almost like a relay race where the recession baton was being held to, to different industry sectors. And by the time one sector kind of bottomed and started recovering, it would hand the baton to another sector. And so you, you never had sort of a full depression of the economy. You just sort of had this flat line level uh, of, of growth where you're not going too much above it or too much below it because different parts of the economy are entering recessions at different times. So he was sort of saying like, I don't really expect us to see a, a full contraction. Um, I think you have a different point of view, but the reason why I'm asking you just to sort of comment that on a high level is to this question of people who are saying, hey, all these people have been warning about lag effects and coming recession and all that stuff, but, but we're not seeing it out there. Right. So what would your high level response to that be before my, we get into my credit response programs? would be is that what has happened is the economy and aggregate has continued to move forward. Uh, but the the number of sectors that are expanding is narrower. And that the main driving force behind this narrowing in economic activity, the decline in GDI, um, the drop in the important manufacturing sector uh, are precursors of, of what are to come. And, and keep in mind that additional monetary restraint is still being pumped into the system. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Fed has not only done a lot of work, but it is continuing to do work uh, in terms of the fact that the interest rate levels are high, they're scheduled, uh, the market is looking for another uh, increase in July, and the um, the more even more critically than that, uh, we have reached um, high levels of real uh, policy rates, and we're seeing a a marked contraction in both bank credit and money supply in real terms, which which will continue to be a drag against the economy as go as we go forward. Okay, so let's tackle each one of those going forward because you go into them each in your letter. Um, the causal factors for this credit crunch, um, I think are several, and you just mentioned a, a number of them, but but doesn't it sort of all start with money supply and velocity of money? It, it Well, yeah, it, th th this is the most critical. It, it, it starts with the Fed raising the policy rate and shrinking permanent reserves of the banking system. They, that's where it starts, and then it, it's first transmitted to money. Um, so money is the first visible uh, uh, indication that, that, that things are going to change. And um, one of the things, I, I wrote a book 47 years ago called Dynamics of Forecasting Financial Cycles. And um, one of, uh, it was a large scale econometric model of the financial markets. And one of the findings that, that I had in the book and which is still borne out by the data that's in our latest letter and which you want to discuss now is that money supply leads a bank credit. Money is leading bank credit lags. And in the current situation, we've had such a severe contraction uh, in money growth that it is now leading to a contraction of bank credit in real terms, very large decline in real terms, and and, um, and actually in nominal terms, bank credit has now declined every month since February. And uh, it looks like that we're in July here, we're just experiencing the second consecutive monthly decline in bank loans. So deposits are coming down. This is forced to change in the bank behavior. It's not to the bank's interest 
to reduce their balance sheet. When they reduce their bank balance, when they when they reduce their balance sheet, it means that they're cutting their earnings potential. And that's not something that they want to do. And so the Federal Reserve, by changing money supply growth, then they change behavior. And we're seeing that right now. Now, there are other elements that are coming into the picture um, because, because the income side of the economy is not doing well. We're beginning to see an increasing delinquency rate. We're beginning to see an increase uh, in, in uh, uh, corporate bankruptcies. And this is a reflection of the fact that even though the stock market is extremely exuberant, in an aggregate macro sense, I'm not talking individual companies, looking from the big picture downward, uh, corporate profits are declining. And I'll, I'll just give you one very tangible uh, expression of that. Um, the, the Treasury's tax collections are very sensitive to what happens to household income and corporate income. And so we've, we've, we've gone through two important tax dates uh, in, in the spring. We went through the April 15th tax collection and then the June 15th tax collection. And according to the Congressional Budget Office, there was a very substantial shortfall in the Treasury's tax revenues. And, and it hit both the corporate and the household side, which is an indication that the, the GDI numbers are in fact correct and that they are correctly indicating a weakness inside of the economy. And, and so uh, we have, um, uh, you, you really don't have to dig that deeply, Adam. You, you can find confirmation of, of, of the problems that, that are in the economy at a time when the Federal Reserve is still pushing downward on the economy's future economic growth. Okay, so so many so many questions to follow up with on that. Um, let me just start with the decline in in taxable receipts, which you're right. It shows that that GDI is going down because there's less income to tax. Um, we haven't really talked much about the debt side of the equation yet, um, but the uh, what we're going to be spending, I think, over a trillion dollars this year on uh, interest payment on the national debt, right? It's, it's approaching that and it'll be even more next year. Um, the, the fact of the matter is there's two elements at work that the treasury's uh, average maturity of the debt is five years. And so uh, a lot, in other words means that half the debt is under five years and, and uh, a lot of debt was put on not only by the treasury but by the private sector at the very low interest rate levels. So if you put debt on and it was a, a, a three-year note in 2020, uh, that debt is maturing this year. There's about $10 trillion uh, worth of um, public and private debt maturing this year, similar uh, amount that will occur next year. Um, when, when, when interest rates rise and interest expense goes up, uh, what happens is that the income stream from prior projects that were debt financed has to be channel, uh, channeled into interest repayment. Well, interest repayment is extremely non-productive. It, it keeps you in business, but it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, build new facilities. It doesn't hire new workers. Um, it doesn't bring it, any marginal new dollars, dollars, yeah. No, it's basically, a, a dead weight loss. Now, um, the corporation, the net interest expense this year has not risen a great deal because when the interest rates are low, the corporations uh, very correctly borrowed very heavily. But as we go forward in time and the debt that was taken on uh, in 2020, 21, 22 is gonna roll off uh, and it will contribute to higher interest expense at a time when these monetary lags are working their way through the economy. Okay, so I just want to underscore for viewers here, we're, we're talking basically about incomes going down, right? National income going down, while at the same time, national interest expense is going up substantially. So we're having this increasing gap that's going forward right now.